nature's near-perfect foods. It contains well-balanced quantities of vitamins, minerals, protein, and fat, so very essential to the preservation of health. As a result, an adequate supply is needed daily by people of all classes and age groups. It is little wonder, therefore, that in Jamaica, where conditions are favorable for dairy farming, the government has developed a special milk breed fully adapted to this tropical climate. The name of this breed is the Jamaica Hope. The history of its development stretches back to the year 1910, when government established the Hope Stock Farm and from the start concentrated on dairying. At that time, there was only a small number of dairy cattle in the island. The majority of these were native bred cows capable of only very low milk yields. The rest were imported dairy cows from the best breeds of Europe and North America. These animals were good milk producers in their cool homelands, but in tropical Jamaica, their yield was not high because they could not stand the heat. Because of this, Mr. H. H. Cousins, the first director of agriculture, began a proper system of breeding at Hope in order to develop a breed fully adapted to local conditions and capable of a high milk yield. He interbred such outstanding breeds as the Jersey and the Holstein, with the Zebu, a heat-tolerant stock imported from sunny India. A slow and difficult task this turned out to be. Year by year, the findings of the many breeding tests were carefully recorded so that on Mr. Cousin's retirement in 1932, other persons dedicated to this great work were guided by those records in carrying on the painstaking research. The scene of operations at length shifted to Bodles near Old Harbor in St. Catherine. And their success was finally achieved. under the experienced direction of Dr. T.P. Leckie. In 1952, after years of careful testing and crossbreeding, an animal containing strains of the Jersey, the Zebu, and the Holstein was officially named the Jamaica Hope and became known as the first tropically developed breed. The aims of its breeders were fully realized. The Jamaica Hope cow can yield on the average more than 10 quarts daily during a lactation period of 305 days. It can calve regularly, is fully adapted to tropical conditions, and resistant to local cattle diseases. The work of spreading the Jamaica Hope across the country is making rapid progress. A breeding herd of over 500 animals is the source of this island-wide distribution. Artificial insemination is fast becoming the chief means of spreading the breed. In the Bodles Artificial Insemination Laboratory, semen from outstanding Jamaica Hope bulls is frozen and stored for later use. An increasing number of artificial insemination officers are taking this service to farms in many of the dairying areas. Farmers who wish to have their cows inseminated must inform the laboratory as soon as the animals come on heat. To date, over 10,000 Jamaica Hope calves have been produced by artificial insemination. At places where farmers cannot be easily reached, Livestock improvement centers, known as stud stations, have been established. A limited number of Jamaica Hope bulls provide sire service to large farms under the lone bull scheme. This scheme remains a vital link in the chain of distribution of the breed. In addition, a revolving herd scheme enables farmers to obtain heifers directly from the breeding herd at Bodles. There is no doubt that the Jamaica Hope has the necessary breeding, but breed is not enough. In rearing these dairy cows, 
farmers must realize that breed and feed must go hand in hand. Every cattle farmer must give his cow the proper care and feeding if he expects to obtain a satisfactory milk yield. I've never done anything that fails, and I don't expect it to fail in my, life, in my last lap. Dr. T.P. Lecky receives the Order of Merit from the Governor General for his outstanding contribution to animal husbandry. Like a fierce mountain, he seems to stay awake, thinking, always thinking, dreaming, subconsciously or otherwise. His dreams are our reality. Is it the same cloud on the mountain? The same water tapping in the swift river basin? The same child with tiger's eyes sifting through the naked river, tracking along the thick valley growth, making his way into God's path for a marble spot of new discovery? Kings wear crowns upon their heads. He wears his upon his soul. The intellectual regurgitates their thoughts. He weighs his, sieves them. Then his genius puts them to work. For him, many watchful years passed in a day in which a new breed of cattle stands grazing over the pastures of his mind. Today, we see them in our land. My great-great-grandfather came to Jamaica just after uh, the day 19, 1834 when slavery was abolished. So he was never a slave owner. And he came in the valley here to, I expect, to plant coffee. There was a barbecue right in front of the room here to show where coffee was going. And then, um, by process of breeding and having children and subdivision and subdivision <laughs> until my father became a small farmer and lived there. I was born right in this district right here. the valley of Western Portland, the villagers live mainly on the hillsides. While river dominates the narrow strip of flatland as it makes its way through the village to the sea. I have never dreamed of wealth or power, but my thoughts were more connected with nature and life that I little understood. The words of T.P. Lecky. I love nature, and this is a place I could dream as a child. And this is one that remains in my dreams. It is exceedingly beautiful, a valley. And I love Portland. In 1922, he won the Merit Scholarship and entered the farm school. The Hope Farm was run on a commercial basis and was an integral part of the school. It was developed as a livestock farm with emphasis on cattle, horses, and donkeys. The herd of dairy cattle was then developed by research and breeding and soon provided bulls for private farmers. Oh, farm was a lovely place to live in. As a student, you boy couldn't want any place nicer to live and work. In 1925, Dr. Lecky took up work on the Hope Farm as school foreman in charge of the livestock. His job then included teaching at the farm school. Dr. Lecky was now influenced by H. H. Cousins, who came to Jamaica as the island chemist. It was through him it was possible at the time to start the development of the Jamaica Hope and the other breeds, especially the Jamaica Reds. Cousins sharpened Lecky observation. This period was devoted chiefly to the development of dairy husbandry and testing of different European breeds and their crosses with the Zibu cattle. In July of 1930, with recommendation from H. H. Cousins, Lecky left for Montreal, Canada, and got in touch with Macdonald College, McGill University. 
Before entering McDonnell College, his first job was to pollinate corn. Though his interest was in livestock breeding, he was introduced to plant breeding. But soon after, he was sent on a Jersey farm in Quebec, where cattle were merely bred to win shows. In October of 1930, he entered the second and final year for the diploma course in animal husbandry at McDonnell College. Leckie was eight in his year. From McDonnell College, he went on to Ontario Agricultural College, Toronto University, as an undergraduate in 1931. Um, what was your studies like there, the people you met in those? That was in the 30s, wasn't it? Yes, I went to university in 1930. Um, while some, my attitude at university, people, I don't go to lecturers very much. I mean to the lecturers to discuss with them other than in classroom or labs. I always go and meet the professors and the professors that could, I feel, that were great. Those that could carry you beyond classroom studies. And I've always been welcome to any of the professors. He excelled in the science subjects. The courses gave him a broad training that suited our condition as he had to do all branches of livestock husbandry and agronomy. His professor in genetics was a world authority. At the same time, there was Dr. Frank Schofield, who was the great research scientist of the world fame. The genius of these men was bound to incite the young Leckie, who was then determined to make Jamaica one of the leading cattle breeding countries in the world. I saw clearly in the light of producing a tropical dairy breed suited to the small farmers of Jamaica, Leckie said. And through the years that followed, it almost became an obsession with me. One had to depend on it. It was a cow that really carries us along, if you were the cow. It was a cow that fed us. When things were short, when you can't get any protein, you could always depend on the milk to grow us. As a child, I had to drive in the cows from the pastures, spend the calf, and we had to, to get the milk. Coming back to J Jamaica, I was not wanted. After you had your degree? Yes. Um, I had to go out in a private farm to work. Again, that was not wanted because the people who would employ you, could employ you, did not want anybody of my training. It became cumbersome to them because the salary they pay preyed on their nerves. And besides that, they prefer to have somebody who can rob labor. Um, I had to go to work. I came in the government service working at a lower salary. I was drawing 160 pounds a year with board and lodging at Hope when I left. And I had to come back and work for 132 pounds a year with the government at Homewood. And then that was problem. When did you publish your thesis? My um, earliest thesis was published in Jamaica, came back in Jamaica. They had it, that was where I developed the concept of the Jamaica Hope, studying the cattle at Hope. I came back recognizing that we could not go on the crossbreeding work. We need to develop a breed of our own. The purebreds were uneconomical. I did the um, uh, research, you know, whilst I was at um, Guelph. And then uh, when I came back here, it was all uh, written up in my thesis and the advice. Well, for nine years, they kept me away from going, being, getting in charge of the herd. So it was not until 42 that I was able to get um, onto the herd. 